Coming up next, it's a lightweight tilt between Charles Dubronx Oliveira and Dustin Poirier. All right, so here is Dustin Poirier making the walk for yet another big UFC spot here tonight. UFC 236 was his coming out party, DC. He ended Max Holloway's 13 fight winning streak and in a near perfect performance in a lot of respects, was able to realize a UFC interim lightweight. They say diamonds are forever and so is Dustin Poirier. It seems like he's been here the whole time. We've seen this young man grow up in the UFC. We saw him at 145 pounds have a ton of success, but we truly see him come into his own as he's going up to lightweight. He's become a UFC interim champion, and he's beat guys like Eddie Alvarez, Justin Gaethje, and Max Holloway. One of the best fighters at 155 is Dustin Poirier. And with Dustin Poirier and Daniel Cormier, safe to say that Lafayette, Louisiana has made a pretty good UFC football over the last few I years. Love Dustin Poirier back on the proving ground here tonight. Well, this young man is a really accomplished submission specialist, and sometimes fighters get offended when you call them a specialist, but most people know what he's trying to do in there, and to this point, no one's really been able to stop. John, he will try to pull guard. He yeah. pulls guard anymore in the UFC at this point, but he understands that for him to be successful, the fight has to be in the grappling, in the jiu-jitsu. If he's able to extend these jiu-jitsu exchanges, he is the guy that is generally going to win. He understands position. He understands going from point A to point B. He always is the one controlling the under. Always has the frame. Just a knowledge of jujitsu that not many people can match. And you can be sure as he makes this walk tonight, he's thinking about just how quickly he can get this fight to the ground and utilize those aforementioned high-level submission skills. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 28 wins, seven losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 33 wins, eight losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Charles Dobrox Oliveira! All right, bring the rules in the locker room. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, oh, back to the players, and fight. So here we go with round one. Seems to be a throwback type of matchup here. A classically trained striker taking on the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. But DJJ black belt with this guy doesn't even begin to describe his credentials. It does not describe how good he is. His vast knowledge of all the Jiu-Jitsu positions. This guy, once you're on the ground, there is no place where you are safe. You are constantly getting attacked. He's always throwing up submissions. He's always attacking arms. He's always attacking your neck. Doing everything to try and make you think submission's coming, even if it's just to change positions to secure top. Well, DC, headgear's not allowed, but he has raised the hands, and he's doing a nice job protecting the gun. He's doing a great job of blocking his heads. A lot of times, those shots to the head will knock you out. Not this time. This guy's making sure nothing lands. Oh, 
All right, so one minute into the fight, we've got a full-on brawl here, DC. It's great for the fans, not necessarily for the gas tank if this thing goes much longer. Not great for the gas tank and not good for the old noggin. You can't take so many upside the head, somebody's going to sleep. Big, powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Poirier's cheek looks like it's cut. Yes, it is. Starting to bleed a little bit change now. He went single into a high crotch. Oh, he's taking his dude for a ride. Oh, my God. He switched him off to a high crotch, rotated him, and took him for a ride. That was a big takedown. Oh, you got to watch him attacking submissions. He throws the legs up to try to get a triangle choke here. My triangle, my triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he goes parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish. Nicely done. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's gonna start looking to land big shots from the top. Well, pretty good work off of the bottom here by Dustin Poole. Hammer fist here by Oliveira. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Looks like he's trying for a submission now. Try to get the finish. Wow, you don't see that very often. Oh, he's in trouble here. Wow. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestling stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than the half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get... Oliveira's got his hand looking for a guillotine choke. Watch guillotine. Oh, we're getting a finish here. Oh, looks like he's countering here with maybe a Von Flu. He's got the side mount. And now all of a sudden his opponent's in trouble. May want to bail on that guillotine sooner rather than later. Somehow stays in the fight. All right, full guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off. Move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom, you've got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to move to the next position. You build the shield, get back to your feet, or dig an underhook to try to get a reversal or a sweep. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, looks like he's got a couple of hooks in here, DC, and defensively, you better be careful. Ten seconds to go. Oliveira's right back to the full mount. Right. Right. All right, let us now look back at some of the highlights from that round, and there just aren't that many guys on this roster that can keep up this offensive wrestling pace over 15 or 25 minutes. But he's one of those guys. He is one of those guys that's able to continuously take you down even if you get up over and over. He has this ability to maintain that pace and pressure that he can wear to his opponents down. That's why you see him get so many finishes as the fight progresses. That's a big strike right there. 
Oh, man, it ain't Dikembe Mutombo, but he is blocking all these shots coming. Man, get that out of here. He sees it coming. You're going to have to mix it up. Shake that finger. Shake that finger. Well, he has landed some good shots, DC, but really unable to string anything together in terms of solid combinations. It's because he's not committing to it fully. He throws his jab. He may blow the right hand out there, but he's not really sitting down on the right hand. He really doesn't seem to have the intent on landing it. He's got to be confident that it's going to land, and he's got to really throw his whole entire body into the strike. Nice. Olivera's hook shot gets blocked. The defense saw that one coming. Oh, nice job to slip off the center line there. His head movement has been a huge, huge factor defensively in this fight. You can never be a stationary target. So even if the feet aren't moving, you got to be ready to slip that head at a moment's notice. Nice punch by Dustin Poirier. Superman punch. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Man, is he timing his shots well here tonight, DC. It's hard to recall him being this accurate in the past. I mean, he is so sharp. And not only is he accurate, he's also keeping very busy. 75 total strikes have landed for Dustin Poirier. And connecting with 52% accuracy against Charles Duke Bronx Oliver. Can't take many of those, you better check. Ooh, head kick lands, he's hurt. Just over three minutes to go. Oh! Well, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, he might be out. Good right here. Well, a really good second round for him thus far. After a somewhat lackluster first round, he has found the rhythm and found his striking range. Scary proposition for the opponent now here in round two. Timing his shots nicely here, champ. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up and using a lot of diverse strikes. Power right hand there from the king of Lafayette, Louisiana, Dustin Poirier. Mike Brown there in the corner has really honed Dustin's all-around game, and he certainly finds himself in the middle of his fight. Oh, lands another punch there. Not a mean guy. He's just doing the smart thing. Oh, he up. has to be attacking that cut, John. I mean, if he's not, then he's doing his opponent a favor. Attack that cut. Make him pay for it. Oh, that's a good strike there by Poirier. Oh, man, head kick lands. All right, so he continues to use his jab effectively here, DC. He gets that hand to the target pretty quickly. I mean, just right away, blasting the jab after jab after jab. He's a phenomenal boxer with a vast understanding of fighting behind an educated jab. Oh, nice right hand. Nice one-two there. Seconds now to go in the round. Good series of strikes for him there. Staying busy and staying accurate. I mean, the accuracy is unbelievable. All right, so a nice straight punch there after he caught the leg. He decides to punch out as opposed to going for any takedown. Very tricky when he throws that body kick. Big kick. Oliveira gets caught by that straight punch. His defense has abandoned him tonight. One minute. That punch, no good. Punch coming, it's blocked. Whoa! What a fantastic... Oh! Well, he's up, but he is hurting for certain. The finish could come at any time. Oh! Man, looks like he's trying to set records here, landing all of these strikes. He is aggressive to a fault and really has been all night long as he continues to pour it on. Got to be careful here, though, not to gas out. Oliveira gets caught with that punch. 20 seconds left. Ooh. Well, it's one thing to have length. It's another thing to use it, and he does it as well as anyone. Nice kick there by Poirier. And that's the end of round number two. All right, well, that's the end of the round, so the location is okay, the cut on the cheek, but 
That is some serious blood trickling out of that cut there. You got to think maybe at some point they call the doctor in, and if he doesn't like what he sees, maybe they stop this fight. All right, let's check out some of the action DC, and how about the punching acumen by that fighter in that previous round? He does not waste anything. He does not loop punches. Everything's tight. Everything's precise. He's a sniper. We always talk about how he's a sniper. He is a sniper, and it showed in that exchange that allowed him to drop his opponent. Third round underway. Well, he continues to land a high number of strikes here, just like he did in the previous round. This is a world-class display of striking here tonight. Oh, and he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those punches. Sticks the target and then moves his head off the center line to avoid the, the comeback shot. Head off the center line and watching the counter with that beautiful straight left that he throws over and over. That jab is fast. Look at that jab. What a punch. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Now he counters with a right hook to the head. Look at how he turns his hip into that leg kick. Poirier gets caught with that punch. He'd be wise to get those hands up. Right hand upstairs. Oh, big left hand there. I mean, he's cutting down the size with these beautiful leg kicks. Well, we've talked a lot about the volume, 158 total strikes have landed for Dustin the Diamond Pool. And striking with 48% accuracy tonight thus far against Charles Oliver. Unable to connect there. Oh, pinpoint knee to the body. If you're trying to knock me out, you one knee to the body. Every time the opponent tries to get close, he just drives that knee to the body. Great time. They continue to exchange. Oh, he just heard him. He just heard him. Under three minutes now to go on the round. It looked like it did stun him a little bit. He was hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Fighter's pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Grounded pound strike there now. And now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look from the transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He needs to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish. Watch his chest go to the mat. He goes and he's out. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Olivera's got an arm. Looks like he's trying to lock up a Kimura. Kimura's not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yes, he's using the Kimura. And he's out. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape DC. Fourier's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. Oh, lands with the ground and pound strike. All right, 
Iconic side control now. Useful strike there. The ground and pound on point tonight. Oh, and he's able to land a strike there from the bottom. Nicely dodged by Oliveira. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Oliveira. Good job, bro. All right, so a high-level round there for him. We'll show you some of the action here, and you got to think the knockdown is going to be featured prominently here. Thought he might have had him out of there. He thought he had him, but the guy's tough. The guy's durable. He has a fantastic chin, but he just needs to stay the course. He does not need to be discouraged. Think about this. You're winning, and you're winning going away. That was just a moment. Keep going in the same direction, and you will get the finish that you want so bad. Here, let's see how he responds. All right, good job by him there to raise the guard and protect his head. He's doing a good job of keeping the guard high, blocking his head, making sure he's not taking those damaging strikes up top. Oliveira doing the right things defensively. Big throw. Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go take that finish down now. Gonna try to attack Kimura here. The Kimura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And this might just be a matter of time. Brilliant submission defense there. All right, so he's got the body locked down here, DC, or so it appears. This is not a guy you want anywhere near your back. Oh, yeah, right hand. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold. It's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him. Know when, when to hold him. Yep, absolutely. Straight punch land. Oh, continuing to work the body to great effect. Stuff to take down, no problem. Man, look at the redness now, almost immediately on the right side oh. of his body. What is oh! Holy smokes! He got him! What a performance! Yeah, there's another one for the highlight reel, and that's probably as good a knockout as he's had in the UFC. Just a perfect shot to end the fight. Crowd absolutely loving it. Flush land to close out his opponent. I'm not even sure the other fighter saw it coming, so a big knockout for him here tonight on the biggest of stages. And there he is after a massive knockout here tonight. Near perfect execution and a seminal moment for him here in the Octagon tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergliata has called a stop to this contest at one minute, 58 seconds of round number four. Playing the winner by knockout, Dustin Well, he's smiling ear to ear, and why not after a knockout like that? I need to take it to the after party tonight. I mean, this is what dreams are made of. You dream of the knockout like this, and then the party after, where you and all your coaches get to celebrate the great handiwork.